So the most common question that you get when you're talking from backpacker to backpacker is what kind of stuff do you carry, where have you been, and how did you get there? So I thought I'd cover one of those topics today, what do you carry, what's in my backpack? Now, what I'm gonna talk about today, kind of what I would consider my standard load, I live in St. Louis, Missouri, I do the majority of my backpacking in the Midwest, so uh, I'm really factoring in mainly Midwest conditions from, I would say, late fall, winter, and spring. So anywhere from lows down to probably the 20s, and then all the way up until probably lows in the 50s or 60s. Now this particular load would carry me down into, I would say, the low 30s. I've omitted some items that I've got over here that I'll talk through, um, because the next trip that I'm going on is gonna have a low of around the low 40s and the high in the mid 50s. So this particular pack uh, would cover me well down to that. Now, my pack uh, is a ULA Ohm 2.0. I've got it a uh, pretty typical um, you know, load out for the way I carry it. This is pretty much how I would uh, do things with the exception of a couple of items that I will show you later that I've kind of moved or, or changed. Um, and I'm also gonna be going on this trip with a friend, so we're gonna be splitting some resources for this trip. So this is the way I've got it. I figured I'd just go ahead, dig in, and start showing you what I've got inside, starting on the outside, work our way into the pack, and then I'll show you kind of uh, anything. If you've got any specific questions about anything that's in this pack, I do have a link in the description below to a page on my website that outlines every single piece of gear, how much it weighs, what part of the, um, the you know, system it falls under and kind of uh, gives you better detail on you know the specifics of each individual item. I don't want to spend a lot of time digging into anything in particular or you know going over the specs of any one thing. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So on this right hand side, um, um, basically my first thing on the right side of my pack or you know as you're facing it will be my cook set. Um, it's not an MSR, it's just the pack that I use to cover it. Um, or the bag that I use to stuff it in there. This is a homemade set that's pretty closely inspired from what Suge does with his. This is an Imusa 12CM pot. I actually cut the handle off the outside of mine and put a uh, pot cozy out of Reflectix on the outside. And so like I said, you've got the handle that's gone. I carry mine with a rubber band. And I've got a top that I got from Mini Bull Designs Cult. A uh, really, really great thing. And I've got just a little piece of foil tape on the top of mine to uh, replace the wooden knob. Inside, I've got a tiny four ounce. This used to be a Rubbermaid container that I use for a measuring cup. This can be used for water or anything else that I need. Um, inside there, I have a Fancy Feast stove and a plastic bag. Made this myself out of a Fancy Feast can and a tomato ketchup or a tomato paste can. If you wanna know how to do this, uh, I'll find a good video and put a description in the link below before I make mine. Um, coffee cup inside of that. This is just a uh, Snow Peak. 450 titanium, I put a little rubber band around the outside and then I made my own cozy for that, nice to have. Inside of there, I've got a windscreen uh, that I made myself out of some tin foil, a vapor barrier, and that's the extent of the cook set. Now, I don't particularly right now have any fuel bottles in my pack. I would normally be carrying some small, either Vargo or uh, other plastic um, style fuel bottles for this. However, on this next trip that I'm going on, uh, my friend Jason and I are gonna split my MSR Whisper Light and fuel, so not included in this particular trip the way I have it outlined right now. But that is the cook set, pretty well lined out, pretty easily and simple. That's probably the most detail I'm gonna go into on any one particular item. So cook set, first thing that's in there, nothing else in that pocket on the side. Move around to the other side. Oh, there goes the walkie-talkie, gotta fix that. Um, I'm going to be carrying a one and a half liter Nalgene ultralight bottle. I like these for the simple fact that this gives me enough water for dinner at night, coffee the next morning, as well as some drinking water around camp. So if all I wanted to have around was one bottle of water for kind of the night into the next morning before I go get more, this would kind of be what would keep it there. Um, and then the last part of that is that I do have one of these pup cup rubber cups on the bottom. I do take my dog backpacking on occasion, but also this just serves as a great extra cup to have around camp if you need anything or if you need to scoop water out of anything. Uh, also, if you need to get water out of a tight space for your dirty water bag, that's a great little feature to have in there. I also carry my um, water filtration kit. This is a Katadan Be Free, a, um, what is the dirty water bag that I use? I use the, dirt, the Katadan Be Free filter, 
and then I use one of these uh, Hydro Pack two liter bottles that actually fit these perfectly. I've got a little piece of Dyneema flash it on the outside to hold it onto trees. Uh, and then the last thing that I carry is just a little tube that screws onto the end of the filter so I can go right down into my bags if I'm hanging it and doing more of a gravity filter kind of a setup. And then the last thing I carry is a one liter extra uh, platypus bag in case I need to carry more water. Uh, the only other water storage that I have in my bag is this uh, 20 ounce Gatorade bottle that I keep on this hip pouch that I just kind of found an old one at a, um, you know, a, a sporting goods store and attach that on there. Uh, I have this marked with graduated lines from um, you know six all the way up to 18 ounces. So if I'm measuring water out for a meal or something like that, this is one of the things that I use to do that. Also just kind of gives me a better feel for how much is in there. Uh, I've had this for a long time and I carry it all the time. So between this is 20 ounces, a liter and a half, and two liters in my dirty bag, and then an extra liter here. As long as I've got water somewhere relatively close, that should be all that I would need to make it through you know day, day and a half or something like that if I was in a kind of a pinch. So um, also uh, that kind of empties out this side. So side pockets are gone. In the hip pouches over here on the left hand side, uh, I normally carry some hand sanitizer, some bug spray, a lighter, and that's just about it. Other than I also typically carry my headlamp. Uh, my headlamp, I believe, is a black diamond icon or ion. Uh, it's really small, it's really light, it's not super bright, I think somewhere between 80 and 100 lumens, but it has a decent battery life with two AAAs. I really like it, it's really easy, it's dimmable, it's got a red light, it's like 30 bucks or 20 bucks. I think this is the best headlamp. I don't do a ton of night hiking or anything like that. I'm typically in my hammock pretty early, so don't need a huge, giant, crazy headlamp. I really like this one. Um, and like I said, that's kind of the other stuff that I would normally carry in this side. On this side, I would normally have some sort of snack like a cliff bar or some sort of other bar. And then I also carry uh, my camera that I use to shoot my camping videos. This is an Olympus TG870. It's got a flip up screen, uh, it's waterproof, and uh, it's drop resistant, and it's kind of you know a little bit more bulletproof than your standard camera. Doesn't quite do some of the other things, doesn't have a 20 times optical zoom or anything like that, but uh, for the purposes of what I do, I really like this camera so far, and uh, this. This is how I carry it right here in my hip pocket along with a couple of extra batteries and a um, couple of extra memory cards. So that kind of goes through what I have on the outside with the exception of over here, I do carry a Coglins Digital Dangler. This is uh, just simply for time and then also for temperature. This gives me the ability to track the lowest and the highest temperature of the day, so it's always handy, uh, especially for shooting videos and things, to be able to know that. And then I do keep a little distress whistle over here on this side. Um, what just fell down underneath here somewhere, let me grab it real quick. Uh, this is gonna be a new, this is gonna be a new addition, this coming trip, um, was able to pick up some really inexpensive, really small light walkie talkies. Uh, this is a Midland X Talker. These were like 20, 25 bucks uh, at Micro Center. They take a couple of AAA batteries or maybe three. Uh, they've got a 20 mile range and I'm kind of just looking forward to the idea that my friend and I, or you know, when my girlfriend Sarah and I go backpacking, we can get separated out a little bit or if one of us needs to wander down a trail and look for a campsite, things like that. We won't have to constantly be finding each other and this will allow us to uh, ignore those phones and keep those off uh, like we like to. So gonna kind of experiment with this. I don't know how long the batteries last. I don't know how long they go, you know, real range in the, um, the actual woods or anything, but we're gonna try it out on a short eight or nine, ten, you know, eight, nine, 10 mile overnight and just see how it goes. So carry that right here on the uh, left shoulder of my backpack just so I can grab it when I need to and quickly uh, be able to speak to somebody if I want to. So the last part on the outside of my pack, um, I do carry a, um, a knife with me. This knife is a Mora knife, um, light my fire, uh, combo, so it's a really simple $15, $20 knife. They hold a nice edge, they're stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about you know rust or anything like that. And then the thing that I really like about this one is it actually does have a Light My Fire fire steel that you can use the back of the blade to light this off of, so you've got redundancy when your fire preparation. I carry a couple of lighters, uh, but it never certainly hurts to have anything that's got some redundancy. This is a great little piece, and I just keep it on the outside of my pack. 
So one of the things that I really like about the Ulm 2.0 backpack from ULA is this outside front mesh pocket. And I'm not the first person to talk about this, but I certainly do believe that it's one of the best features of this pack. It makes getting to your items really, really easy when you need to. Apologize, dog is sitting here in the front corner of the video. But um, basically, on the outside of the pack, You've got uh, my rain pants. This is one of the things that I think is probably the most overlooked uh, value items that you can go out and get. There's some great, great rain pants out there for like 30 or 40 bucks. And I'll tell you what, this is one of the things that I encourage people that are first getting into it. Get a rain jacket, get some rain pants, because I'll tell you what, if you get stuck out there and your hiking pants and your shoes and everything gets soaked, it's not a lot of fun. I just did a Colorado trip with my girlfriend and I'm really, really glad we both had good quality rain pants. So I keep these right in the very front pocket just so they're really easy to get to. If it does start to storm, I can get to those right away. Next thing down below that, I do carry one of the one ounce Dutchware sit pads. I think these things are great. Uh, I do sometimes carry a sportsman camping stool. That thing can get a little bit, little bit chilly at night just for the simple fact that the wind goes down. I put this right on top of it or I put this on a log or a, uh, a rock or something like that. For one ounce, uh, this little thing goes a long, long way. And in the extreme case that you do start to get a little bit of chill through your hammock at night, this can be great to just stick under your butt or under your feet um, for the Weight, there's not much better value that you can get and get in backpacking than, than one of those. Um, down below that, I do sometimes carry a, a decent microfiber camp towel. This is one from REI. It's a decent size. I like to have one of these just in case things do get wet. It's nice to be able to dry things out. If your shoes get wet, this is nice to be able to shove down in there and maybe get some of that moisture out of there. This is also great for drying off a tarp in the morning if you can't get it to sun dry. Uh, so a nice little camp towel. It doesn't take a ton of room or space, but I like to have one of those. I keep it in the outside so that when I stop, if I need to use it, I can. Next thing that I do, I carry my um, my toiletry kit, not toiletries as in uh, toothbrush and toothpaste and things like that, but more of actually using the toilet. Uh, this is a new acquisition for me, actually called the Deuce of Spades from Tent Lab. Uh, picked this up at REI. This thing weighs, I think, less than an ounce. It uh, sounds stupid, but it's saving a couple of ounces off the last... Uh, trowel that I had. Hi there, how are you? Um, and it's just an absolutely tiny piece of aluminum. It's got a nice sharp corner on it, so should make uh, for, for good service there. And then the only other thing that I carry is just a little uh, camp towel pouch that's got some uh, toilet paper and stuff. Probably redundant to have both pouches, but you know, just kind of keeps things separate and clean for me. Uh, and then I normally keep a couple of uh, small, small flushable baby wipes, biodegradable baby wipes in there as well so that I can get myself nice and clean if I need to. Uh, this whole thing weighs under a couple of ounces, so it's really nice to have that when you're out there. Uh, last two things, or two or three last things. I know I might have my rain cover in here. I have that uh, drying out outside. Did a little experiment on it last night, so don't have that, but it's a little tiny Dutchware rain cover that goes into a tiny little Sea to Summit bag. Uh, thing weighs like an ounce or two, and it's great. Uh, I do carry these REI rain mittens. I really like these things. Um, I typically carry, while I'm hiking, I wear a pair of these real thin smart wool glove liners. Uh, they're warm enough to keep you warm while you're out there, but they're not so hot that your hands get all sweaty. And between these, and if it is a little bit you know, colder during the day, I can throw one of these mittens on and it's just got enough of kind of a wind breaking barrier to it that it does help. Um, you know, getting it over the watch sometimes isn't the easiest thing to do in the world. Um, so this can really help, but then more importantly, if it's really coming down and raining out there, uh, and I've got my you know rain hat, rain pants, rain jacket, everything else on, these really go a long way in keeping your hands warm and dry. So I'm a really big fan of these little guys. Um, they weigh practically nothing. They have almost no insulative value, but from a wind and from a rain perspective, I'm a big fan of those, uh, as well as these smart wool gloves. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about those here in a little bit. Uh, and then the last other thing that I carry in the front of my pack is I carry my first aid kit. I just carry the day, day hiker first aid kit from REI. Inside here I have an extra lighter, I have an extra chapstick, and I have a tick key, as well as some extra medication, Benadryl, uh, acetaminophen, things like that, that would help me out there on the trail if anything does happen to happen. Um, but this is kind of a lightweight, small, simple kit. I could certainly cut down on this, but when it comes to first aid, I'd kind of actually rather be a little bit overprepared out there. So that's the last thing on the outside of my pack. Let's go ahead and dig in to what's on the inside of the pack. 
On the very top of the pack, the very first thing that I always keep is my rain jacket. I want to make sure it's as quick as possible to get to. Um, I have a Marmot Minimalist jacket. I carry mainly Marmot stuff just for the simple fact that it fits me better. I don't necessarily know that it's any better in quality than Patagonia or North Face and I have a wide range of stuff, um, but Marmot just fits me well. So I would really encourage you as you're looking for gear, don't necessarily pay attention to the brands as much as you do what fits you best, what fits your body type, your sleeve length, your torso. Um, and typically when it comes to backpacking stuff, error a little bit on the big side. You wanna be able to move, you wanna be able to flex, you wanna be able to lay down on the ground and do things that are a little bit more uh, movement style than you're used to. And having things that aren't quite so form fitting will certainly help. Uh, that was one mistake that I made early on was I bought things a little too snug and just got uncomfortable, especially if I fluctuated up or two, you know, down a, a couple pounds. So uh, Marmot rain jacket right up on top. The next thing that I carry immediately is my tarp. This is a war bonnet superfly with uh, doors. It's the 12 foot ridge line and I keep my uh, stakes in here as well. I just carry some MSR groundhogs with some guy lines attached to the end of them right here. Uh, there's six of them in here, which is plenty of stakes for what I need. These also have the um, Dutch uh, tarp worms or tarp hooks. I can't remember what these are called uh, on the outside to connect. I've just got some real small um, uh, shot cord on each of my, my tie out corners. Uh, I also have snake skins on here and a Dutch wear continuous uh, ridge line with the flash it as opposed to the zing it. And so far I'm really, really liking that material uh, as far as weight and everything goes. So tarp right on top. The reason I do that is if I get to camp, one of the big things that I love about hammock camping is that I can set everything up under my tarp. I can stay as dry as possible. I don't have to put my tent up in the rain and try and get all that done while it's raining on me. I can put my tarp up first while my rain jacket's on, keep my backpack underneath its pack cover, preferably gonna be under some tree cover because I'm in a hammock. Obviously, I gotta be near the trees. Uh, and then I can set everything else up once my tarp's up so I can keep everything dry. I can do the same opposite thing the next morning. I can take everything down, pack it all up, keep everything dry, then pack up my tarp and have that be the last thing on the outside so that it doesn't get everything else in the bag wet. Speaking of which, one of the things that you probably can't see in the way that I have this right now is on the inside here, uh, I do have a Cuban fiber Z packs pack liner. This has probably been one of the smartest things that I've bought since I started backpacking. It's perfectly conformed to the size of these kinds of packs. It's got a roll top enclosure. It weighs practically nothing. It's super waterproof and it's been great. Dealing with this instead of dealing with a garbage disposal bag, um, although that certainly works and I certainly still use it for my friends and my girlfriend and other things like that. Uh, this is just a whole different world as far as waterproofing, you know, all the stuff that's really important to you. It's got a Velcro, real light Velcro closure, which I'm a huge fan of. This was a nice feature to have, um, but it's so such a light Velcro that when you stick your arm down there, even if you've got fleece and things on, you don't get snagged, which is great. So very first thing on the top of the pack, um, this isn't obviously full right now, but this is my Ursac all white. This is a bear bag, a Kevlar bear bag where I store all my food. So typically this would have uh, a day or two worth of food doubled over and then you hang this on the tree at night. Love this thing. Uh, recently had to use a bear canister and if given the option between the two, I really wish I could have used my um, my Ursac. So right after that, I've got an Eddie Bauer uh, 800 fill hooded down jacket. This is great for keeping you warm all the way down into the 20s. Uh, love this jacket. Really, really nice to have in there. Don't put it in anything. Just kind of shove most of my stuff in there if I can. Um, my hammock, as of right now, I've actually rotated back and forth between my war bonnet Blackbird, and then this is actually just a standard Eno double nest. I do have uh, some upgraded suspensions on here, the uh, Dutchware whoopee slings and tree straps, along with uh, you know titanium beaners and titanium uh, Dutch clips. But uh, so far, you know, as far as the winter stuff, when I don't need a bug net, I really like these. I'm going to be upgrading it at some point in the future to probably like a Dutch half wit or you know just a standard Argon 11 foot hammock. But for right now, this works for me. Uh, it's about 21 ounces, so it could get lighter. But, you know, for right now, this hammock works for me. Um, just underneath the hammock, 
I've got my one little bag of stuff that I keep that I want to keep dry. This is kind of my electronics and my accessories, things like that. Um, in there, I keep the charging cable for my watch because that's kind of what gives me a lot of my uh, guidance and navigation while I'm out there. Uh, I keep a little set of foam earplugs in case the woods are just particularly loud or there's a, a crazy bird or something like that when I'm trying to sleep. Uh, I carry a little tin. Uh, this was used to be hair gel, uh, but now it's just got cotton balls soaked in Vaseline in there. This is my fire tinder. It's nice, light, easy to deal with. You don't have to deal with the plastic bags and trying to get them open and closed. This is a great solution. These things weigh almost nothing. Um, Inside there, I've also got just a set of you know simple earbud headphones and a really lightweight iPod Nano. Uh, I like to keep just a couple of episodes of a podcast and an audiobook on here if I get stuck in my hammock in the rain or if it's really, really cold and I just want to be in there. It's nice to have, or if you're struggling to get to sleep at night, it's nice to have one of those. Um, I also carry a Goal Zero charger. This is for my watch. I can also charge my iPhone or anything like that off of that if I absolutely need to in a desperate situation, if I need power in an emergency. Uh, keep my toilet tree kit in there. This is just simply uh, a fold up travel toothbrush and some toothpaste. Don't really worry about much else on those shorter trips. You know, if it was longer, I'd consider carrying some more stuff. Um, and that's basically everything that goes in my little uh, tiny bag. And then last underneath that, I do have my tarps. Um, in this one bag, I carry two tarps. I carry my uh, or not two tarps, two quilts, sorry. Uh, I've got an hammock gear incubator, uh, 20 degree. This is just a standard kind of incubator, 20. Uh, really great under quilt, love it, full length, really uh, fantastic quilt. And then I've also got an incubator 20 from um, Hammock Gear. So like I said, this will take me down to about 20 degrees, maybe just a hair over that, depending on what kind of clothes and other insulative system I'm using, um, sit pads and things like that. But these two quilts will really go a long way, and I'm a big fan of just carrying them in one stuff sack. Lastly, the only other thing in my bag is my clothes. And I carry uh, almost six and a half pounds of clothes, but this will really keep me nice and warm in just about any scenario. So in my clothes bag, uh, I will do another video in more detail about my clothes and specifically what I carry and what I actually wear when I'm out camping. Um, but this will kind of just give you an idea. And I pack all of my clothes in the order that I think I would probably easiest put them on when I get to camp. So when I get my shelter set up and I've got my hammock and I'm sitting down and I can kind of relax a little bit, start to shed the stuff that I've been hiking in. And my theory is I always want to have basically a full set of dry clothes with me so that if I for some reason fell in a stream or a river or I you know got submerged in a lake or if for some reason it just really rained hard and my rain gear failed on me, at least I could get dry and warm at camp. That's a big thing for me. So in here I've got a long underwear top. This is a smart wool base layer. Um, I've got a merino wool t-shirt that I can wear on top of that or independently. Underneath that, I've got my first sock liners. These are also merino wool. If you notice a trend, I'm a big fan of wool. Um, smart wool base layer pants. That's just the mid-weight along with the top. Underneath that, I've got a pair of fleece pants. These are just the REI Teton pants. Those are great for having at camp uh, just to be able to mill around in if your pants get wet, or especially if they're dragging in the, uh, the water as you're hiking. Um, those are great to have. I have a Outdoor Research Down hat. This is fantastic to sleep in no matter how cold it is outside. That will absolutely keep you warm. Um, I hike in a smart wool hat and then I also bring an identical smart wool hat for camp. This is what I actually wear as a base and then I put the down on top of that just so that I don't sweat and get too hot um, and kind of mill out or, or wet out the down. Um, but having both of those double layered down to zero degrees has been absolutely fantastic. So I do carry uh, a couple of extra hats as well as a pair of smart wool thicker gloves. These are kind of more of their serious gloves. Um, those are what I wear in camp and when I'm asleep and you know in my hammock and things like that. Uh, last thing I do carry, I carry a merino wool buff. So that combined with my two hats gives me really full face coverage at night if I'm really, really cold or if I really want to kind of get bundled in. Uh, otherwise that muff just goes around my neck and kind of keeps that part of my body nice and insulated. And then lastly, I do carry an extra pair of thick wool socks as well as a sleep mask just so that in the morning if I want to get some extra sleep, I can really keep that light out and do that. Keep all of that in a nice light stuff sack. Um, 
And then the only other things that I really have on this pack is I carry a couple of carabiners in case I need to lash anything together, but that's what I carry. Now, the stuff that I did omit to really talk about, I do use a pair of REI Carbon Flash uh, series hiking poles that I've done a little bit of modifications to, but I will talk about that in a different video. Love hiking poles, wouldn't go on a trip without them. Uh, everybody's got their theories on that, but that's kind of my personal take on it. If it's a longer trip or a more serious trip, somewhere that I don't know where I'm going, I do have a Garmin 64 um, ST GPS map. Uh, I'm a big fan of this thing, but it is kind of heavy. So if I, you know, have a feeling I know where I'm going, or if the map's pretty easy to follow, um, if the trail's well marked, I'd pretty much just leave this at home. Um, I do bring a pair of Crocs for camp shoes. These normally get strapped to the outside to one of these carabiners. These are fantastic because you can use these for stream crossings. You can use these when it's wet outside. You can use these when it's dry. Um, they're great to just slip on and off if you got to get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. These are fantastic. I think these are the best pair of camp shoes even down when it's colder because your socks are going to be what keeps you warm. Um, charging cable for the uh, GPS, if I was bringing that, I would also carry that. And then lastly, when you get into the really extreme colder weather, uh, I do have this fleece hat. This is kind of nice because this fleece hat has a... Um, an actual face mask that's part of it that's kind of built in so I don't know if you can kind of see but basically there's like a mask that comes out and uh, goes over your face I don't know if you can kind of see that in the way that that's you know set up but uh, when it's really really cold outside and I really want to cover my face at night when I'm sleeping I'll use one of those um, I have a pair of these, um, you know the Gordini um, these are kind of the inexpensive budget brand um, you know, still, you know, legit outdoor wear, but you know, not a, a, a big expensive glove. Um, these are just an insulated mittens. These combined with the smart wool camp gloves uh, make a really nice pair. I've had these down to zero degrees overnight and been, you know, pretty warm as I slept um, the whole time. And then lastly, I do wear either a pair of the kind of shorter REI gaiters, the more weatherproof ones, or if it's not going to be super nasty outside, I just wear the uh, the really light, stretchy, easy little gaiters. I think those are great for keeping stuff out of the top of your shoes. Speaking of footwear, if it's going to be really cold down below 30 degrees or so, I do have a pair of Sierra Designs booties. I bought these used. These are great things to find on like eBay or at your local used clothing store like I did. Um, you know, normally these are 65 or $70 or sometimes 50 depending on where you buy them. I think I got these for like 20 bucks. They're really great to have around camp when it's really cold outside. Uh, my girlfriend just got a pair as well and she's really glad she did. When we were on our Colorado trip, it would have been pretty miserable without them. Uh, last thing to really talk about or you know maybe second to last um, I do carry this little Pedco tripod for my camera um, I use this when I'm shooting videos and doing things like that it's really nice because it's got this you know rotating head so I can put the camera really anywhere I want it to go I can tie this thing to trees it's got a little velcro strap built into it um, so this is really nice although I will say uh, I have dropped a camera in a stream on one of these but that was more my fault than this tripod's fault this didn't fail I did uh, and lastly kind of to the effect of the shoes um, I normally wear these Solomon um, I think these are the GTX4 quads um, or GTX4 um, boots. I really love these boots. They're fantastic. I do put a super feet green liner in these. Um, I've had these for three or four years now. I did have to kind of glue some of this base sole back on after, you know, several hundred miles. Um, but some shoe goo took care of that. No problem. And they're, you know, super still waterproof and, and safe and secure. Um, love these in the fact that there's almost no break in time on these. I pretty much started hiking right away. Now that's certainly not like, you know, a claim that they make, but um, you know, it's been consistent with everybody that I've talked to that really, really enjoy these. So lastly, uh, the only other shoe that I do wear is a North Face Hedgehog. I really like that shoe. It's a shorter shoe, but it's still got a, a real Gore-Tex liner and a Vibram sole. So that's been a great shoe to have as well. Um, that's what's in my pack. I'm going to actually go ahead and throw everything back in it so you can kind of see how I go about that process. And, uh, I'll do that in another video called Packing My Backpack. But, um, Hopefully this was informational for some of you and kind of gave you an idea of what to carry. I think in my theory, the biggest things that are most important are shelter, how do you make water, and how do you make food. 
Obviously, you've got to have clothes and things to keep you warm, but pretty much everything beyond those three major categories plus your clothes is going to be something that's more of a comfort or frivolous item. So remember that and it'll keep your backpack light. It'll make your backpacking more enjoyable and I think you'll have a lot more fun. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for some of you guys. And um, if there's anything that uh, you're curious about or any questions that you have, feel free to drop me a line in the description or shoot me a line on the blog post on my website uh, through social media or any of that kind of fun stuff. So thanks a lot. Have a great day.